Hey GED students, I had a student DJ post on the Light and Salt Learning Facebook page a couple of tricky proportion problems, and they're a little on the complex side. Good news is I've not seen one of this style on the GED, but um, it could come up, it's fair game, and um, this concept could also come up in word problems. So let's take a look. All right, so first thing is, this is a proportion problem. What am I even talking about? How can I recognize a proportion problem when I see one? Well, uh, what you're gonna see with proportion problems is you're gonna see a fraction equal to another fraction. What a proportion is, is equivalent, equal, ratios or relationships. And so we have a relationship between seven and nine that's equal to the relationship between B and B minus 10. Now, one of my lovely favorite tricks, I should say, for getting rid of these nasty fractions that scare people is what we call cross multiplying. Um, as we learned in the main class video for this, cross products are equal. That means I can take the numerator from one of my fractions and multiply it times the denominator of the other. So uh, in this case, seven times the quantity. Make sure you bust out parentheses because I'm not just going to multiply by the B. I'm going to multiply by the B minus 10. Well, cross products are equivalent. So it's going to be equal to what I get if I multiply the other numerator by the other denominator. Cross products are equal. Um, and so I get nine times B on this side and they're equivalent. And now I've got to let my algebra skills kick in. So remember that when you have a multi-step equation, that's what this is, it has a lot going on, you should simplify if you can. And I do see some simplification I can do. This seven, is shoved up against this parentheses, meaning the seven is multiplying with this grouping. I can do that math. I can do the multiplication. So let's do that. So seven times B is seven B. And remember multiplication passes out over groupings. So seven times negative 10, I think of it as a negative as I multiply, is negative 70. And that's going to be equivalent or equal to the other side, now there's nothing to simplify on the other side. You know, 9b is just 9b, so I'll write that down. Okay, so that's the first step to solving multi-step equations. You simplify uh, if you can. Now, what do we do next? A really good idea is to get the letters to the same side. A lot of students here get lost because there's a b on the left, there's a b on the right. What am I supposed to do? Well, what you're supposed to do is get the variable terms together. Now you might say, well, which one should I move? It actually doesn't matter. But I think it's easier to move the 7b over. Um, and so that is what I'm going to do. Now, if I want this 7b to zero out, I am going to have to subtract it away. Now, a lot of students say, no, Kate, I should add it because of this minus sign right here. That minus sign is telling me what the 70 is doing. But if I want the 7b to zero out and it's positive, I've got to subtract it away. Okay, so I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. So I'm going to jump all the way across the equal sign. Make sure you get across the equal sign and do the same thing. Subtract 7b. And let's see what my new equation will be after making that change. All right, 7b minus 7b zeroes out just like I wanted. And now I have minus 7d or negative 7d. Nothing minus 70, of course, is negative 70. And then if I have nine Bs and I take away seven of those Bs, I'll have two Bs left. And now it looks like something more what we're used to with proportions. Now uh, my goal here is to isolate B. It's almost by itself. It's almost isolated, but there's a two hanging out. This two is shoved up against the B, so it's multiplying. I'll do the opposite. We move numbers across equal signs by doing the opposite. So the opposite of multiplying by two is dividing by two. Of course, I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. And let's see what our new equation will be. Multiplying and dividing by two are opposites. They cancel just like I wanted. B's alone, hey. And there's the math to do. And you can do this in your calculator, don't worry. Anytime you have alg on the GED, you do get that lovely TI30XS multi-view. But negative 70 divided by two is negative 35. 
So what's my final answer? Well, B would have to be negative 35 in order for this relationship above to be true. This is solved. B is alone. All right, very nice. Let's look at the next one. And you know, DJ, when you sent me this, I think I know why you may have gotten the next one wrong because um, in the answer key, Khan expressed their answer as a decimal. Well, just to let you know, the GED would probably use a fraction on a problem like this. So we'll do it both ways. So once again, cross products are equivalent. So if you have a fraction equal to a fraction, that's when you can use this trick. But guys, it's got to be equal to, okay? A lot of people mix up when I'm allowed to do this. So when I have a fraction equal to a fraction, that's a proportion. So I can use this lovely fact that cross products are equivalent. So I will get 2 times n minus 4 for my first cross product. And it doesn't really matter which numerator and denominator you start with. Okay, guys, you'll get the same thing. And then on the other side, numerator times denominator, I get 8 times the quantity of n plus 4. Now, as usual, if there's any simplifying we can do, we should do that first. So I will do that. 2 times n, of course, is 2n. Remember that multiplication passes out over groupings, so 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. And then it's going to be equivalent or equal to what I get from simplifying the left-hand side, or the right-hand side, sorry. And this time the right-hand side does need to be simplified. 8 times n is 8n. And 8 times positive 4 is positive 32. All right. Now, once again, we simplified the left-hand side as much as we could. We simplified the right-hand side as much as we could. It is time to make sure we have our letters on the same side. And again, we see a letter on the left, a letter on the right. You know, how can we get the letter alone if the letters are all over the place? So let's get our letters together. Once again, I don't really care which one you move. You'll get the same answer in the end, but I want to move the 2n. And the reason why is because if I move the 2n, I won't get negative numbers. Students tend to make more errors when negative numbers get involved, so I try to avoid them if I can. It's not that big of a deal if I can't, but you know, if I can, I like to avoid them. So I'm going to take away this 2n. Once again, I'm subtracting the 2n because the 2n is positive. So, and oh, I should have mentioned this before. A lot of students would be like, shouldn't you divide by 2 right now, Kate? I'm not trying to separate the 2 and the n. If I was trying to separate the 2 and the n, I would divide. I'm trying to take the entire 2n term, and that's why I subtract instead of divide. All right, so, and then I jump across the equal sign, and notice where I write the minus 2n. I write it right under the other n term, because I know that I can only add and subtract like terms. So n's with n's. And let's see what our new equation will be. Well, 2n minus 2n zeros out. There's nothing there. But of course, 0 minus 8 is negative 8. So I see that minus 8 drop down there is a negative 8. And that's going to be equivalent or equal to what I get after making that same change on the right hand side. 8n minus 2n is 6n. And I haven't done anything to that plus 32. So it'll remain there. Uh, in the same form. Lovely. And now I have a two-step equation. Uh, what do I mean by that? In order to get n alone, I have to move this 32 and this 6. Now, remember, when you are solving, you're working to get rid of numbers, you actually work the order of operations, Gemma, backwards. So I'm going to move anything that's adding or subtracting first. So let's go ahead and move that 32. Right now, that 32 is adding with 6n, so I'll do the opposite. I'll subtract it. Again, I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. And let's see what our new equation will be after making that change. Apparently, I did not give myself enough space, you guys. So adding 32 and subtracting 32 are opposites. They cancel. The only thing I have left on the right is 6n. Yay. And then negative 8 minus 32. Guys, remember, you get your GED calculator if you struggle with negatives, so don't stress it out so much. But if I'm already in the whole $8 and then I go down another $32, now I'm really in trouble. I'm at negative 40. And if you have to type that in your calculator, you're going to type negative 8 minus 32. All right, now I'm almost done, I'm almost done, but n is not alone because of this 6 that's hanging out. Now this 6 is a multiplier, so I'll do the opposite. I'll divide both sides by 6. Now, remember what I said. The, the Kuta worksheet that you were working on, DJ, um, 
did this as a decimal and the way you would do it as a decimal remember I said there's two answers here is you would use the regular divide by button negative 40 divided by 6 okay so if you did that negative 40 divided by 6 you would get this negative 6.6 it's like the devil number on oh my land six 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 yada 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 which you would then want to round um and that does happen on the GED but it usually happens in the context of word problems in geometry that we round if it was just a straight algebra problem like this, they would more likely have the answer as a fraction. And I know you guys are going, oh my God, I'm so scared of fractions. What can I do? Don't worry, your calculator's gonna handle it. What you're gonna do is just use a different way to divide. You're gonna use the fraction bar. So what I want you to hit is N over D, and then you'll type negative 40 on the top, and you'll type six on the bottom, and then press enter, and your calculator will uh, make sure the fraction is reduced to lowest terms for you. So negative 40 n over d, it really doesn't matter if you hit n over d first or after this, the number you type, but negative 40 n over d over 6, enter, and I see that that's the same as negative 20 over 3. Let's squeeze this in, and that is equivalent to 6 divided by 6 cancel, so just n. So two ways to say the ex same thing. Negative 20 over 3 is considered the exact answer because I don't have to round it, which is why we prefer it in algebra. We tend to like exact answers. Negative 6.666666 is a decimal approximation because I have to round it. Um, and we tend to prefer those in real world scenarios uh, because they make more sense to us. Um, and so things like word problems or geometry. All right. Woo. Lots of information in there. But if you have any questions, um, be sure to drop those in the comments. I'd love to answer them and happy learning.